Are your kitchen and bathroom way overdue for a remodel? Well, I got the guy for you. Call John Sellers at First Response Contracting, 484-256-7136. Both residential and commercial services, and he's licensed and insured. Call him at 484-256-7136, First Response Contracting. From real estate to real life and everything in between, the Brad Wiseman Show. And now, your host, Brad Wiseman. All right, we are back in the studio, and I'm so glad. I'm always loving being in the studio. How about you, Hugo? You, I you, love it. Yeah, I so do I. It. It's fun, right? <laughs> That's right. Except Especially for when stuff doesn't work right. <laughs> special guests, yes. <laughs> we do have a special guest today. Actually, this guest is not just special. He's epic. Oh, man. Let me just say all that. Right. He's epic. No we, pressure. <laughs> yeah, no pressure at all. We got Adam Boxman here. He is the creator of the Epic Home Buyer Experience, but it gonna, it's going to go into many of the things, not just home buyers. So if you listen to this podcast and you're like, hey, you know what? I want... I want to know more about just any kind of business. You can use what you're going to hear today in every single business that's out there. So uh, without me delaying anymore and talking about this person next to me, Adam Boxman, how are you doing? Man, I am very happy to be in this beautiful space with you guys, man. Thank Uh, you. Thank you for having me in this beautiful place. Well, thanks for making the drive to here here because a lot of times people will, you know, they'll cop out and they'll do the streaming thing. But when you're in the studio, that's when you get to see Hugo. 100%. 100%. See, and that, right. that makes it worth it, right? right. 100%. Yeah, exactly. Nobody comes to see me. So let's talk about this epic thing. How, you know, I'm seeing even T-shirts with this on. I mean, I saw uh, in the Keller Williams family reunion, there was a couple people wearing the uh, the epic T-shirts and all these things. How, how, where did this come from? Where does epic home buyer experience come from? It's just a mindset. I think um, epic doesn't mean, okay, we create the perfect scenario and we're teaching everybody do something exactly the same way. Right. What I think it is, is if you're working with somebody new, a new client, a new customer, someone you really want to impact in a positive way, why not make it as epic as possible for that person from the moment you start working with that person? Yeah. And so epic just is a mindset that says either working with you is going to be awful, which we don't want. (laughs) That's a bad thing. (laughs) Right. Or it's going to be forgettable to the point where when they need you again, they forget all about you. Mm. Or you can give them an experience in me. It's been real estate, but in any business, you can give them an experience from the moment you start with them that they're never going to forget, but also believe that they have a trusted person that is committed to them just as much as they're committed. So Epic is just about making it special for an individual so that you can create a lasting relationship. And special is not the same for all people. Oh man. It's right. That's the thing too. That's it's listening. It's, it's, you know, figuring out what is special to them. Cause what's special to me is different than what's special to you, Man, you know, right. Yeah. So automation I think is great in some instances and will fail you in other instances. So the automation of the same gift for the same person or the same situation for everybody doesn't personalize for the person that you're with. And I think too often in all service businesses, especially in real estate, we try to create this automatic system that is going to impact everybody individually. Yeah. All things to all people. 100%. Yeah. Uh, especially in the buying side of real estate. Mm-hmm. Um, you really need to get to know who people are if you really want to impact them. And it starts with listening, like yeah. you said. Yeah. So I if think, a couple likes beer, give them beer instead of wine. It, right? Yeah. So, yeah, that's exactly right. And the, it doesn't, you don't know until you actually have a plan to sit down with people, regardless of your business. So for me in real estate, it's sitting down with a home buyer. And really knowing how I'm going to impact that home buyer specifically. Right. Because everybody's different. Yeah. Everybody comes to you if you're in a service business and they're all different people. And until you can actually sit down with people and learn how they're impacted and who they are and what they love and what they don't love, how in the world can we just help them in the same way we help everybody? Yeah, exactly. And and I think... um, It takes listening. You're right. I guess that's why they offer you when you get a filet. Do you want it medium, medium well? Do you want it rare? Do you want it medium rare? You know what I mean? Imagine if we all went to somewhere and they made us the same damn steak. Every single time. Yeah. You know what's funny? I would think I didn't like steak if it was always rare. Uh, Think about it. Like I like my steak medium. Hugo, what about you? That's true. No, that's a good point. You know what I'm saying? Like if if I went to a restaurant and it was always rare, I'd be like, well, I don't like steak. It's just not. But no, it's just not the temperature that I like it at. Well, how about this? Like for me in real estate, people buy knives. 
Yes. For the Cutco not, knives are Cucko, awesome. By the way, Cuckos are great knives. Yes, I absolutely. love Cucko knives. I'm a chef. I come from the restaurant. Cucko, I have some that are 30 years old. Now, if I buy a knife for a client yeah. that has never been in their kitchen, worked in their kitchen, or even touched anything in their kitchen, yes. am I helping? Am I doing anything for that person? And the next time you see them, they might look like this. Yeah, oh, yeah right, because they <laughs> had no idea what they were doing. Yes, exactly. Now, for me, it's about finding out, instead of spending whatever I'm spending on that Cutco knife, it's actually saying what actually is going to impact this person's life that's going to help them that they're going to say, wow, that person listened to me. 100%. And in real estate, we haven't done that for a long time. No, you're so. It, I think in any business, we're not doing that enough. And, and the more we automate things, the more social media comes into our lives, the more everything's computerized. We tend to stop listening. We tend to put thing people in categories, whether it be age group, whether it be male, female, whether it be whatever it is. We put them in these categories and we say, okay, I know how to deal with them because they're this age and they're female. Yep. Now I know exactly what they like. And, and that's not true. And what we don't do is that we just, whenever we're in conversations with anybody, we actually are sitting there staring at somebody most of the time, mm -hmm. contemplating what we're going to say next, instead of actually listening to the person and how we're impacting that person. And in all businesses, if you don't listen to the person, you walk away thinking the conversation went great mm -hmm. when that person has no idea who you are. Yep. And you don't know who that person is. And most of the time, it just takes listening yeah, and, and actually taking great notes. Yeah. So for me, if you're sitting down with a new customer and you're taking notes while the person's talking to you, the what you're giving back to that person is that you're listening to them and it's important what they're saying. And by the way, you can actually find other opportunities later in life or later in the situation with them yep. to connect. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And yeah. connecting is what it's all about. You know, John Maxwell says, you know, we all know how to communicate, but f few know how to connect. We, we saw John. John was amazing, right? Yeah. He's incredible. Got to really, do the did. That's what I got from that. <laughs> He's incredible. So, uh, so moving on. So tell me, so Epic came from, you had an experience uh, before real estate, yep. which was in the, in a service business yep. and it was restaurant business. Tell me how you went from restaurant to real estate. Yeah. So I was blessed to find my high school sweetheart and marry my high school sweetheart. I met her. She is a sweetheart. Man, she is. Jackie, right? Yeah, Jackie. Jackie. Yeah. So I met Jackie when we were teenagers mm -hmm. and we went to college together, got jobs out of college and our lives were set. Like I was working for Marriott, big company. Oh, nice. She was working for Johnson and Johnson, another big company. Big company. We were buying, we bought it. We were buying a home and, um, in the process of buying the house, this is the, uh, the irony thing where sometimes in life things go negative mm -hmm. and you don't realize till like 20 years later. So there's another experience called the crappy experience, which yeah, is what right. he's going to talk about. That's right. So <laughs> in this instance, if you think about a horrible experience that happened to me, mm -hmm ended up being one of the best things that ever happened to me in my life. And that happens where you think something's horrible and then all of a sudden it becomes the greatest thing. So in our experience buying our first house, well, we had a less than stellar representation. Mm. We were basically a the deer in headlights that were excited about buying our first house, mm -hmm. but no idea what we were doing. And then were turned into a transaction. Yeah. And went through the process of buying our first house and realizing that it was such a horrible experience. And I thought, man, if that guy can be successful in real estate and I love client relationships <laughs> I can do this and all the things that I believe in buying a home is one of those big moments in people's lives. One of, one of the biggest. And we, I've, ch that person was supposed to be a guide for the biggest moment in my life and yeah. could have turned into a lifetime of business if I was his cheerleader for how he handled it. Mm -hmm. And so when I realized that that guy's successful, what could I do if I left the restaurant business working 90 hours a week? Another bad thing where I lost my mother right after getting married and buying our house, which propelled me even further to say, I can't waste any more time in my yeah. life. So it was always buyers though. Yeah. And buyers were always the thing that mattered to me and always the thing that excited me. It was never yeah. about sales. And so I started early on in my, re when I left the restaurant business and got into real estate, I just found out early on that my passion was going to be buyers. Yeah. And I believe in life, rest, real estate world can be a million different businesses, but you can specialize within it 
And I just found buyers to be my passion. Yeah. And we said before this, before we went live, what I was thinking about the whole thing, and it just kind of hit me, was it's interesting because you went from a service-oriented business, which is restaurant business, which basically 90% of restaurant, which we kind of talked about is service, 10% maybe the food, depending on where you go. But usually the service is very important. We can all cook something. Yep. Um, But you went into, into this business, and I swear you really went right into serving buyers because you were serving buyers before. When I go into a restaurant and I ask for a cheeseburger, I'm a buyer. Yeah. I'm buying a cheeseburger, but I'm also buying you. Yep. And I'm also, how many times have you been in a restaurant? And my wife and I do this all the time. My wife does it more than me yep. because she has a lot of trust in their opinion. She goes, I'm thinking about this with the salmon or the cod with this. And the lady, the people will usually go, oh, well, you know what? This, I would definitely go with the salmon. My wife will take that recommendation. That is selling. Yeah. That is that is trusting the person, your advisor. She was an advocate for my wife. 100%. Because she tasted it already, right? I just wanted everybody, when I was in the restaurant business, I wanted everybody to leave, with, not just saying it was okay. I wanted them to leave saying, you have to go there. Yeah. In the restaurant business, you thrive on people leaving and telling everybody that they have to go there. Absolutely. So when I got into the real estate world, it was always my focus that if they leave the transaction and there's anything other than them wanting to tell everybody Mm -hmm. about how well I did or how, how much effort or how much care or how much that it mattered to me that they were well taken care of, that has propelled me to 20 years later getting referrals. And it just so happens that I believe... It's all happened because I believe referrals come from buyers in real estate Mm -hmm. because of the feeling of buying a home is the same type of experience of going and having a great feeling at a restaurant or the feeling you have in other big moments in your life. And I've learned that by giving people these experiences from day one, Mm -hmm. that it's propelled me to referrals and repeat business. In our business, there's so much quickness to get the person met at the house. And you're not thinking about the experience that person's having. And I just felt it's weird having a bad experience buying my first house and having a passion for the restaurant business somehow made the puzzle pieces work. Well, you don't want it to happen to anybody else. No, I wanted everybody. Especially if this is your industry, you know, you know, as much as we're competitive in this industry, we want the industry as a whole to look good, to do the right things for our clients and for our community. Yep. So if, if we're all just kind of saying, well, I'm going to do it for myself or I'm going to do this, that doesn't make sense because it's, it's a, it's an actual, it's a business. And, and, and if we, if we all look bad, we all do bad. You know what? Um, and what else I think we forget is that we're supposed to be the professionals in the business Absolutely. and um, the experience the buyer has in any other thing in life. When they go to a professional, the professional guides them away from the things that are problematic. Mm hmm. And in real estate, the process over the last three years has gotten harder and harder yes. to buy a home. And I think when you when the consumer now, when they have the opportunity to meet with somebody and see what the difference is, yeah. that person can give them true representation in that initial conversation that doesn't happen regularly. Mm-hmm. And in real estate, it's lost. Uh, and I, I'm excited it's coming back. It is. It is coming back. And I think we're not trying to make a blanket statement here about all realtors either. I mean, there's there's right. many, many realtors out there. And we're not trying to say that, you know, we're, we're, what we're trying to say is that here's here's what we should be doing as as an industry. We should be doing this and, and doing it better because really we serve the public. It's in their best interest. If you think about it, like it in for real estate and, and the mm-hmm. buyer, it is in everybody's best interest to get to know the consultant or the professional that they're trusting. We know better. Every professional knows sometimes what's better than the customer that's coming to them. Mm -hmm. And so the doctor knows what's better for the patient than the Mm -hmm. patient knows. And that's why the person listens to the doctor. Yeah. And the attorney knows the legal case better than the customer in real estate. The agent does know that meeting a person at a home isn't in their best interest. It's not going to set them off on a good path and a good plan. We just haven't been doing it. Yep. And we're going to start doing it with the home buyers, yep. and now they're going to have the same type of experience. So yeah, no, I agree. We got to totally. do better. We got to. We know what's in their best interest sometimes. Yeah, and we're there to help them. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Are you tired of looking at your car covered in road salt and winter grime or not quite getting the results you would like to see from the car wash? Well, I've got just the solution for you. The Detail Shop, your go-to destination for premium auto detailing. Yeah, and for listing, we know how to guide them. Which is, which is, which is exactly what it is. Yeah, absolutely. So you, you said it, it's part of the make it epic. You have three different things that I saw here moments that are unforgettable. Yeah. Moments that make you smile. Yep. 
moments that moments you have to tell everyone about. Yeah. So uh, when I get down to working with a consumer or customer or client, and for me, it's real estate, but in any business, there are three results that come from that experience, no matter what. Mm-hmm. And for me, your the experience is either going to be awful mm-hmm. and they're never going to come back to you. True. We, we avoid that in all, in all businesses. Yeah, awful is not good. However, in businesses where you want to get repeat business and referral business, the forgettable experience is just as bad mm. because if someone seven years after buying a home with you doesn't remember it, you're the agent that's fighting for business. So yeah. we're going to leave that as something yep. we don't want either. So I just decided there has to be something that we can describe that will make it so that it's unbelievably positive. Yeah. And Epic just somehow came to my mind um, a year ago. The word Epic for me was just something that was like, man, it just elicits positivity. Mm-hmm. So now that I'm teaching about this experience and not saying, well, I'm teaching the Epic experience. Mm-hmm. It's just the mindset of how can you create this experience for your consumer or the, for your customer. Right. It just decided there's three ways. Something that's epic in my world, it's not the definition, it's just what I believe. If you want to go into making something epic, nothing that's ever been called epic has ever been forgotten. Right. So epic always is unforgettable. Yeah, like an epic storm. E- yeah. Epic. Wh- whatever epic, it is. Yeah, hurricane. So, but for me, epic, the unforgettable experience buying my first house wasn't epic. So even though it was unforgettable, it wouldn't be something I'd call epic. So right. in sitting down and thinking about epic, for me, the client has to smile. Yeah. When they think about, having the experience with you, working with you, being represented by you, you being their advocate, if they remember it and they smile, you've gotten somewhere. Right. Now we take it one step further in real estate and any other business, because just because they remember you and they smile doesn't convert that into a lifetime of referrals and repeat business. It could mean that they think you're a joke. Yeah. I mean, I've been to a bunch of restaurants. So true. I've been to a bunch of restaurants that I had a good experience and I Mm -hmm. left it and I smiled, but I didn't tell everybody about it. Right. The experience that's epic in my mind, instead of waiting for seven years or during that seven year period for someone to say, Hey, do you know a real estate agent? And waiting for that person to say, yeah, Adam Boxman's a great real estate agent. I needed to create an experience that people left the transaction or the settlement and they were telling everybody that's a lot. And that's hard to do. Yeah. So it's that you're you're not, even if you're thinking about it and working on that, it is it's not going to happen with every single person. No. It, it's just not. I mean, you can, you can be completely, um, you could be Mr. Epic, which is you. Um, and you're still not going to always have everybody leaving the transaction going, Oh my gosh, Adam, he's amazing. And I want to tell everybody. Actually, what's funny about that is if I talk about my failures yeah, in my career, it's that I always thought that if I was acting this way, I was going to make it Epic for everybody. Yeah. And in reality, when you, the whole point of leaving the transaction and making it epic and saying they want to tell everybody yeah. is simply how that one person took it. Mm-hmm. So I've learned in my career that I had a lot of clients that were just like me, same characteristics, same mm-hmm. personality. And I got, I won with those people mm-hmm. because same they here. were like me. Same here. The key for success in real estate is to actually sit down with someone who's totally different than you yep. and have them leave the experience and say it was epic. Chameleon. And you were, and it's not that you're not being yourself. Right. No, it's just, you have to adapt. I mean, in anything, in any business or in, even a doctor, if he's going to do surgery on an engineer, as opposed to surgery on me, he's going to give the engineer a hell of a lot more detail about the surgery yeah. than he's going to give me. Cause if he starts telling me details, I'm going to, it's going to, I'm going to like totally wash over and be like, you're out of your mind. Or I'd be like scared to, to shit, like yeah. really scared about the operation. So it's just, a, it comes down to that. You know, my story about that, I have a little story about this. I think I've told Hugo before in another podcast when you talk about that, I, there was a time when I first got into business and, and it was, I was selling a house to uh, an engineer. Somebody who was more of an engineer type mind. And we went into the room and I'm going in and I'm going, man, this is, this is a huge room. This is amazing. Look at the size of this room. Cause I'm a touchy feely, like that kind of guy. You know, I also can see that a room is large by just looking at it. Yeah. You know, this is a big room. The engineer said to me, what are the dimensions? So I look on the sheet and I said, it's 22 by 30. Wow, this is a big room. <laughs> There's a difference it's right there. By 30. Right, right. He, he, he or she needed to hear that number yep. to know in their mind that it's a big room. I know it's a big room because I'm in it. I'm standing there. But isn't that funny? But that's the way it is with customers. It's 100%. So if, yeah. if I sit down, here's the thing. If I meet a random stranger at a house, like yeah. happens in real estate, and I'm in a random kitchen that mm-hmm. I've never been in with a random person, how in the world am I going to sit down across from this person 
help them buy the most expensive thing they ever bought in their life and impact that specific person. Yeah. Because in reality, if I do a consultation with them and I learn this person's an engineer yeah, and they're going to be sending me spreadsheets oh, and, yeah. and they want to know the square footage and the exact breakdown. Yep. If I don't know that about that person, I'm, if I sit there in my consultation and I speak about Adam and Jackie and my wife and kids and my personal life and all of those things, that personality is going to be like, this person's not for me. They don't <laughs> they're going to be like, I don't give a rip. Yeah. Cause they're not, that's not where they come from. That's not where they are. And that's also not how they buy because yep. they always say people will tell you how, how to sell them. Yep. And, and not that it's all about sales, but it's really not about the sale part. They'll tell you how, how they function, how they are in life. And once we know that we can then guide them to the right, to the right thing, hopefully, you know? Yeah. But here's what's crazy. We think we're working hard for sometimes for these people. Yeah. So in real estate, 87% of people don't go back and use the same agent that helped them buy their previous home. Yep. And we as agents think we're working so hard for these people and we're wondering, they're obviously going to come back to us. Of course they're going to come back to us. Yeah. And the reality is it's how they felt. Yeah. And so- uh, It also could be the other thing too about that. It's how they felt. Yeah. The other thing is too is we tend to go, all right, got our commission check. We're yep. done. I'm out of here. I'm not going to talk to them again. And we send them magnets and we think- Yeah, the, yeah. So uh, Maya Angelou- uh, oh yeah. I love said, that. That's a great uh, saying. This is hits home for the, a lot of service. It's businesses. on your Facebook it page. Is. Yeah. It hits home for every service business because in every service business, sometimes you feel like you're working hard for somebody or you're yeah. telling them what they need to hear. And Maya Angelou said, people will forget what you said. Mm -hmm. People will forget what you did, mm -hmm. but people will never forget how you made them feel. Totally. And so in all of, in the restaurant business, it's how you feel when you leave the restaurant. Yeah. It's how, even if the food wasn't great, if the service was amazing or they yep. literally took care of you in the best possible way, you're going to tell people about it. Um, in every business, you succeed and fail based on how the people that you're working for feel. Absolutely. In real estate, it's awkward because we think we're working hard for people. Yeah. We think we're doing exactly what we need to do for them. But if you're working for somebody who's one personality yep. and telling them one way, and they are not that personality, they don't feel great about it at no, all. No, not so, at all. You're forcing a circle into a square. It doesn't work. 100%. So before we end the podcast here, yes. and see, we've done pretty well. We're, yeah, we're coming up on 22 minutes, and I want to wrap it up. But one of the things that, real quick, is epic doesn't mean everything always goes right. Yeah. So just real quickly tap onto that one. Okay. So if you imagine, I, I think of epic sometimes as like a superhero story. Hmm. Like if you imagine the superhero, a Superman movie. Yeah. A Superman movie is only a Superman movie because there's a million ups and downs. Right. Like the whole movie is ups and downs. Sure. But at the end of the day, it's still an epic story. Mm -hmm. And so in real estate, especially, or any service business in real estate in the last three years, yeah. if we don't think buyers that I've worked with have struggled yeah. losing houses, um, not getting the deal done that they could get done, they might get done or whatever happens, any experience with a consumer or the mm -hmm. client does not mean epic means everything went perfect the whole time. It's how you handle it. Yeah. And more importantly, how the consumer feels about whether you're with them. So for me, if a client loses a home mm. about that, I feel for them because they didn't get the house. We're going to do something that's going to lift their spirits because they don't feel great in the situation. Yeah. Or they're going to feel like at the end of the day, our guide is still our guide. Yeah. That's epic. And also, if you build the expectations correctly, it won't be as depressing. They expect what's going to yeah, happen. Yeah, because you did the consultation saying, hey, by the way, there's yep. a possibility you're going to lose four or five ohms, possibly, epic before you get prepared. the first. Exactly. If you yep. are prepared and you know what's coming, yep. and it, even when it happens, that doesn't matter. Epic means you had the guide. So super, Superman yeah. was a guide for Lois Lane through the whole yep. movie. And at the end of the day, she knew it. That's exactly right. Yeah. There we go. Lois Lane is how we end it. That's amazing. <laughs> Superman. And Superman. Well, you are pretty super. I got to tell you, thanks so much for being here, man. I love this whole epic home experience. I love the whole, whole epic customer experience, which I think is going to grow into that. As we go on, you're going to be doing other businesses and other things. And I think it's going to go in that direction. Yeah, so uh, thanks so much for coming out. I appreciate you're that. welcome to come out again anytime you want. And uh, we can we can continue this conversation. Well, I'm easy to find. If everybody wants to find me, you can find me on Facebook, on Instagram. Yep. And, uh, I'm happy to do it. And looking forward to it. Awesome, man. And thanks for calling me on Easter, too. That was very nice. Yeah. All right. Here we go. Here we go. All right. This is the end of the show, of course. Come back every Thursday, 7 p.m. You'll see us on Facebook, Instagram. Oh, where else are we? YouTube and all those other different places. Thanks so much for being here. We'll see you again real soon.
Are your kitchen and bathroom remodels a little overdue? Well, now's your chance to call First Response Contracting. John Sellers will take care of you. 484-256-7136. They do residential and commercial, and they're licensed and insured. Give them a call at 484-256-7136.